So I'm going to go through the guidelines with you, okay, and just give you some uh, comments, perhaps. And but to understand that, it's actually very difficult, actually, to get a good series of uh, a good paper, right? So in fact, we found two papers, uh, two main papers uh, on uh, meta-analysis of the various papers. Okay, so uh, meta-analysis is actually a very statistical kind of stuff. I also don't understand it, right? But certainly, what it means is that they go through all these papers and then go through all the complicated calculations and stuff like that, okay? I hate maths, uh, so that's why I've been doing dentistry. But certainly, you know, um, uh, you know, that's how they work out, okay? And basically, they say that they work out all the factors and all the, they try to el eliminate all this confounding bias, whatever you want to call that, right? Uh, but certainly, one thing that has come out from even all these papers with all these confounding factors of our different medical conditions, we know that there's actually an increased risk of failures. That's for sure, all right? And in fact, the risk is actually about two times higher. And uh, certainly, uh, at significant enhanced risk. If you read that uh, in the statement uh, for, uh, that we have put in for implant failure among smokers compared with non-smokers, and the risk being higher in the first year with a slight decrease of up to about five years post-implant surgery. And uh, there's a higher early implant failure rate in such patients. Now, this is actually quite important because when we are looking through all the uh, evidence and all that, we find that this is actually something that has come uh, out and, uh, and uh, it's actually something that we can actually put on paper to say that there is actually a level 2 plus evidence, okay? That means it's pretty good. Uh, level 1 is the good stuff, right? 2 plus is quite close to level 1, right? And so we are actually putting all the level sort of a high, uh, high evidence level uh, sort of statements, so to say, right? So now we know that the early implant failure rates are higher, huh? which is what I was telling you about peri-implantitis in the early stage. And this actually makes biological sense. Remember I told you earlier on about smoking and how it gives oxidative stress, particularly to the vessels with vasculitis, with problems with healing, right? Healing requires blood, blood supply. So that's basically what it is. So we know that there is evidence that implant failures were enhanced after five years, but the thing is that becomes a little bit more complicated, right? Because in a sense that uh, we have uh, other factors coming in. In fact, most of these so-called failures might well be even related to periodontal disease because you know smoking actually enhances uh, or rather uh, increases the risk of periodontal problems, right? So it becomes quite complicated. That's why the level of evidence in those papers that you read through, especially talk about, talking about so-called late failures related to smoking and all that, they weren't very good. There's only one or two uh, sort of relatively decent longitudinal studies with uh, lots of uh, numbers of implants, about 2,000 implants, saying that there's slightly enhanced risk. And in fact, that paper say there's no early failure, you know. So what, what are you going to do, you know? But anyway, that paper is not good. It actually didn't follow up properly uh, the patients. And they were a very heterogeneous group of patients. So it was very difficult to determine whether, well, how true it is. So we forget about that. So we're going to talk about the, the early implant failure. And the, the other thing that is that uh, we found that the, whether it's early smoke, uh, sort of a light or moderate smoking has no difference, okay? So heavy smoking is more than 20 cigarettes a day. And certainly, the number of cigarettes smoking actually determines the state of health, uh, perhaps. If you smoke much more, then it's likely that you're going to suffer from more problems, right? Okay, so what are the evidences, or uh, other evidence relating to smoking and dental implants? Okay, S smokers who undergo uh, dental implant therapy at a higher risk of early implant failures and should be closely followed up during early healing phase of the osseous integration. So this is actually biologically sensible, as I mentioned earlier on. We know that smoking uh, make wound healing uh, bad, right? So we all know that actually even, if we don't have a talk about implants, talk about extractions, right? I'm sure during your under school, uh, and undergraduate dental school days, they'll tell you an extract, patients who smoke, higher risk of a uh, problem with infection, dry socket, stuff like that, okay? And this is a, a great C level 2 plus evidence. It's, uh, uh, we have some well-conducted uh, well conducted case control cohort and many from the meta-analysis that we saw in the papers, okay? And so we know that, right? And uh, smoking has a so strong influence on the complication rates of implants, okay? It causes more marginal bone loss. So this is actually something that has come out in a lot of papers that we have gone through, right? And uh, it increases the incidence of peri-implantitis, okay? So now, this is a word that also I, I, I know some of you who are, especially there are so many periodontists here, I won't want to say too much about it. Because I, but certainly some uh, people uh, know, have a lot of strong views of uh, peri-implantitis, right? 
uh, how it happens. And in fact, uh, it, it, some even dispute that even is even present. Okay, but anyway, the thing is, uh, it does affect the success of a uh, bone graft. Okay, now this is actually another big area, um, but. In a way, we are actually focusing on dental implant therapy. We didn't actually uh, sort of put it very specifically on bone grafting, but we all know that uh, it's the same uh, principle, right? If it affects your implant osseous integration, it affects your bone healing, all right? So when you put your bone grafting, then it's going to be a problem. And you're putting a foreign material in the body especially, right? Have I skipped something? Uh, uh, sorry. Okay, so this is uh, what we just done. So the next thing is actually uh, uh, that uh, statement in your booklet is that it has a strong influence on the complication rate implants. It causes more marginal bone loss after implant placement, implant implantitis, and the success rates of bone graft. Right. Now the next thing is in the evidence is that for smokers who undergo dental implant therapy, we must pay attention, particular attention, to complications such as periimplantitis, marginal bone loss bone graft uh, healing as part of the post-surgical implant care. Where possible, uh, the recommendation is to uh, suggest alternative prostodontic treatment. That's, uh, as Ansgar Ansk had mentioned earlier on about, uh, you know, um, for re irradiated bone, okay? And this is also relatively so-called good evidence, but, uh, you know, at two plus, right? So we still can't get really quite to uh, the gold standard yet. But certainly, in the papers that has come through, we know that uh, this is something uh, has come across as uh, quite well documented in most of the papers, and uh, especially in the meta-analysis paper. Now, what is mentioning is also the fact that we there are some things that we do not know why exactly. There's this thing about a higher implant failure rate in the maxillary arch uh, for the smokers, right? Okay. Now, this is something actually uh, not well understood. Um, I think Manskar mentioned a little bit about bone quality in a posterior maxilla, right? So that might be one of the reasons. Uh, and uh, the effect of smoking has a few things, okay? Um, as I say, I'm not going to talk too much about the uh, smoking itself, but we all know when you smoke, you have nicotine, right? Now, nicotine is known as a uh, vasoconstrictor. So, uh, some people believe that when you have the posterior mandible, right, you have the tongue, actually, if you look at your tongue uh, in the resting position, it actually covers the posterior teeth, right? So when you're smoking, uh, it may actually shield the effect of nicotine on the posterior segment of the mandible. 